will certainly see continued focus on senior manager accountability. Uh, that, that's obviously a regime that's going to roll out here in Australia. It's being expanded at the moment in the UK. Hong Kong is really coming to grips with it and we're expecting to see Singapore announce a similar regime. I don't think we've yet seen the full impact. We have started to see how those regimes have changed culture and strengthened governance. When the senior managers regime was being introduced in the UK, it came at a moment of almost toxic relationship between government and the industry. And people came at it feeling as though they were being attacked, and in some respects they were. In a sense, they almost missed the opportunity. They, they were so defensive. But once they started to draft the um, responsibility statements, and to see those responsibility statements joined up in a responsibility map, they recognised that what they'd been forced to do was to think hard about things that they'd simply taken for granted for a long time. The quality of the management information, the way in which they interacted with other parts of the bank. I think the impact of this continued focus on culture and individual accountability is that it will really focus the mind of individuals in relation to their roles and responsibilities in the organisation. And I think it will really create a slightly different focus when people are looking at transactions and activities. They'll be starting to really think through what their responsibilities are and who else they need to draw in in terms of sharing responsibility. Uh, we'll also see, I think, for senior executives, a, a natural focus on what it is that they are actually required to do as part of their roles and a focus on all the different inputs into those decisions. Who do they rely upon? There's no doubt that the accountability regimes, whether it's in the UK or in Australia or in Hong Kong and no doubt in other jurisdictions as, as and when introduced, have as one key aspect accountability. Despite the differences, I don't see that there's anything that's irreconcilable between the different regimes. I think broadly they all come down to a clarity of accountability with respect to individuals and pulling all of those individual accountabilities together in a single document. So the regimes differ in the sanctions that attach. But there's no doubt that individual accountability and with that the implication of enforcement is a key component. People have to feel not only are they accountable, but if they fail to demonstrate that accountability, there will be consequences. I think one of the unintended consequences is likely to be that individuals will be very concerned about what they are mandated to do and what essentially is specifically prescribed and they're going to be less willing to take responsibility for other things and other areas ad hoc. So it's going to put serious pressure on chief executives and serious, uh, if you like, pressure generally on organisations because people will be very concerned about straying outside the scope of the parameters they've agreed to. Uh, and we've also seen it in the context of regulatory settlements. So increasingly we're seeing that as part of a settlement with the regulator the regulator is requiring an attestation from a senior manager uh, to ensure that the steps that were required to be taken have in fact been taken. But to look at it just through the enforcement lens would be to miss the opportunity. People came out of the process actually recognising that things were clearer, that they'd thought harder about how they did things and that things were better as a consequence of the process and governance had improved. Firms need to really be thinking about, one, how they, first of all, ensure that their structure is fully understood and is fully reflected in these regimes, but two, to ensure that they're training their people, not just their senior managers, but also those who report to them, those who those managers may report to and others in their organisations, to make sure they really understand what the expectations are and how they work. The key thing is not to see it as a compliance project to see the potential that it has for strengthening governance, clarifying accountability and improving culture. If you take that opportunity from the outset, you'll get the benefits.